In this video, we'll talk about grouping questions with the begin group and end group types. This is great functionality within XLS form and is primarily used to help us stay organized and to simplify our skip logic within the relevant column. Let's talk about how to create a group in XLS form. Here I have my XLS form template opened up, which already contains the required tabs and column headers and a few questions to start us off. In this sample XLS form, we're asking the respondent questions about dogs and cats. Before we dive into these questions, it's polite to first ask if they agree to answer these questions. So for our example, we've added a question at the very top that's asking the respondent's permission to take the survey. If the user selects no, then none of the following questions would be relevant to them. Without having groups in this form, we would be required to add content in the relevant column for each and every row. That's fine for a form this small and simple, but the reality is very few of the forms that we're authoring are ever as concise as this example, so groups will definitely come in handy for more complex forms. So, let's create our first group. To begin a group, we use the type begin space group, all lowercase. A row needs to be inserted above the first question of that group. To begin a group, we use the type begin space group, all lowercase. For the begin group type, XLS form also requires that we assign something in both the name and label columns. You can put whatever you want here, but be aware that the label column will display above each question in the group, so it's important that this makes logical sense. I'll call my name dog underscore questions and the label dog questions. To end a group, add a row after the question in the group with the type end space group, all lowercase. This row should only have a type with all other columns blank. Let's do this one more time but with our cat questions. Add a row above the first question in the group with the type begin space group. Give it a name and a label. Then in a row after all the questions you'd like in the group, add the end group type, leaving the other columns blank. Now before we grouped these questions, we would have needed content in the relevant column for every single row in order to implement the appropriate skip logic based on this first permission question. But now we have two groups within this form. The reason this is helpful is because we can now apply skip logic to all questions in a group by only adding content to the relevant column of the begin group row. This is really helpful when you're dealing with XLS forms that are complex with hundreds of rows, so it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing even for the simplest of forms. So let's add content in the relevant column now that we have groups. We only want to ask the questions in each group if our respondent gives us the permission to. So for our dog questions, they're only relevant if permission We only need this in the begin group row of each group that it applies to. So in our example, we need it here and also in the begin group row of our cat questions. As you can see, this is a much cleaner way to utilize the relevant column because we reduce the number of places the skip logic needs to be implemented. And overall, our XLS form is cleaner and easier to comprehend. Now you know the basics of grouping, which uses the begin group and end group type, and you can implement grouping to simplify your XLS forms.